Have you ever thought about how much you owe the Lord because of all the things God has done for you, the blessings he has bestowed upon you, how he has kept you, how he has provided for you, protected you, above all saved us. He delivered us from so many difficult situations and circumstances. He fed us uh, from vines that we did not plant. He allowed us to drink water out of wells we didn't dig. To tell you the truth, I owe him too much to fail him now. I want to take you into a message I preached not very long ago entitled, I owe him too much. My, 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 my. Let's go in and listen to this message as God speaks to our heart. But this message entitled, I owe him too much. Let's listen. I said 52 watching this episode for him to have the victim to stand on the witness and say, yes, 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 I'm guilty, yes. Churches would be better and we'd have some testimonies in here <laughs> instead of hiding under the pew and act like the word is talking about somebody else. Act like I ain't got nothing to do with that. If we could have some testimonies in here once in a while, say, yes, I'm guilty. He passed, dropped grace. He exposed guilt. But as he passed by, he unlocked the gospel. Thank God for the gospel. Paul, Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe, Matthew 24, 14. And when this gospel shall have been preached throughout the world and witnessed to all nations, then shall the end come. Shout gospel one time. Every child of God ought to come every Sunday not to hear gossip, but to hear the gospel. And when you leave here, we need to leave gossiping the gospel. For the gospel has different effects on different folk. It don't make everybody act the same way. It will make Maddie shout and Sally pout. <laughs> it will make one person mad and make somebody else glad. That's why everybody can't leave shouting on Sunday. We love to see everybody shouting, but some folk can't shout. You weight it down with too much stuff to shout. And whenever word go forth, it won't let you shout if you're too guilty. But can I tell you, it sure will set you free. The gospel will lift a load off of you that will never be lift anywhere else. That's why the gospel come and it cuts it's like a sword it cuts at and back it cuts going and coming the accused and the accuser the convict and the convictor the condemn and the condemner you in the pew but me in the pulpit oh, a lot of Sundays I get through preaching I don't want to shake nobody's hand I want to get to the office as soon as I can and put some bandages on wounds that I made myself. I wish I had some hip in here. Anybody else in here like that? When you read the word, it don't just touch somebody else. If you read it right, it's got to cut you. See, the Bible is a mirror 
whenever you look in the mirror, you don't see the person down the street. You see the one standing in the mirror. And whenever you read the word, if you don't see yourself, you ain't been reading it right. Do I have a witness? The Bible says Jesus passed by. He saw a man. I like it. Jesus saw a man. He was blind, but he was still a man. He was a beggar, but he was still a man. Never minimize mankind. A person may not mean much to you, mean a lot to the Lord. Because whenever God see any of us, he see a diamond in the rough. Because God made and taking nothing and making something. <laughs> he take a nobody and make a somebody. <laughs> to be honest, most of us in here, if it hadn't been for the Lord, we wouldn't be very much. <laughs> hadn't been for the Lord that brought us from where we used to be to where we are now, we wouldn't be very much. Talk to me, somebody. I know when I look at myself, thank God for Jesus. Oh, y'all don't let me. When I look at where I used to be and where God brought me from, I shout every time I think about it, thank God. Y'all hear me, don't you? Only thing I ever deserved from God was a killing. <laughs> I don't deserve to be in the pulpit at Salem Baptist Church. I don't deserve to be able to travel all over the country and preach to people all over the nation. I don't deserve for my name to wing and be hanging everywhere with folks saying good things about me. I don't deserve it. Whatever bad they say about me, it ain't bad enough. Y'all oh, don't like me this hour. They can't say enough bad stuff to equal up to who I really am. But I'm who I am by the grace of the Lord. You don't hurt me by saying bad stuff about me. If you ask me, I'll tell you myself. Got any help in this house? He saw a man. The Bible said that was blind from his birth. Can I take my time in this house? He was blind from his birth. Let me say it one more time. The man was blind from his birth. Can you take just a few years, a few months? and reminisce over the stuff you would have missed if you was born blind. Well, bless you. I want to just cut just for a moment and say just a word about this message. Jesus in John 9 and 4 said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Notice he didn't say I might or I should or I, th I think I will. He said I must. That mean no changes. That mean that I have been summers. I have been assigned to do work for Christ and I must do it while it is day. Night is coming. The day will come when we will not have the privilege, opportunity, or the chance to do what we should do for the Lord. We will say sometime down the road, if we didn't, when I could, I wouldn't. Now I want to, but I can't. I owe him too much for him to fail me. Now there's so many Pacifics in my life that if it had not been for the Lord, I would have lost, been gone a long time ago. And so I'm going to work the works of him that sent me while it is day. I'm going to give it all I got while I have the privilege and opportunity to serve him. Let's go back and listen to the conclusion of this message entitled, I owe him too much. How many know what you see sometimes? 
is not what you see. <laughs> I'm going to be through here after a while. What look like it is ain't. What look like it's going to be something great and maybe something bad. I've seen trees that look good standing up. You cut it down, it's got a big holler in the middle. Uh, I've been down on fruit that looked good on the outside, but it was rotten to the core on the inside. What you see, you don't always see. Talk to me, somebody. The man was born blind. I mean, watch this. Whenever you're sick, folks start trying to figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. Whenever you get sick, first thing folks start talking about, they must not be living for the Lord. You better not stay sick a long time. Child, you might need to go back to God and get it right with God. Yeah, as long as you are sick. But when they get sick, it's a different story. But how many know you can be sick and still holy? You can be sick, talk to me somebody, and doing what God wants you to do down to the T. You know what I discovered? That God selects some people that he can trust with sickness. Some people get sick, yeah. They quit church. They get sick. They get mean and hateful. And low down, some folks get sick. Y'all hear me, don't you? They complain all the time. They want handouts from everybody else. But other folk can get sick and keep on stepping. They can say, I'm down, but I'm not out. They can say, you know, it may be a little rough right now, but I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm going on to the other side. You can, you can get three pots of water put on this counter, three pots of hot water, and you'd get different results from the stuff you put in it. You can get hot water, put an egg in it. Hot water will make it hard. You can get hot water, put vegetables in it. Hot water will make it soft. Get hot water and put coffee in it, and it was fragrance the whole house. Some folk do that. Some folk get in hot water. <laughs> they get hard. They get mean. They get hateful. They get low down. But some folk in hot water, they get soft. They, they, they can't survive by themselves, but put some folk in hot water, and they wake up and say, I woke up this morning uh, with my mind uh, stayed on Jesus. Have I got any witnesses in this house say, uh, though you slay me, yet will I trust in you. I'm not going to hold y'all much longer. Uh, the man was born blind. Watch the disciples. Now, I want to say it three times so you know it. The disciples, it was the disciples. Y'all, it was the disciples that asked this stupid question. Listen, it said, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents to make him be born blind. I told you, some folk think that when you're going through, it's because of your sin. You see, they had this belief of what you call the transmigration of the soul. Here it is. They believe that you lived in separate bodies. They believe that if you lived in this life and you was hateful, low down, a connive, <laughs> yeah, and when you die, your body would be buried but your soul will be deposited into another baby's body. And because of how low down you was in your last life, 
you suffer in this life that you may be blind or lame or crippled. Talk to me, somebody. But if you was kind in your previous life, when you die and your soul deposited to another body, when you get in that other body, you won't ever have no sicknesses. You'll be healthy all of your life. They believe in the transmigration of the soul. The second belief was that you could literally sin before you got here. You remember when Esau and Jacob was in their mother's womb? They got to fighting in her womb. <laughs> Y'all don't like me. So they said, could be something happened before birth. Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? Now, number one, a parent's sin can defect the baby. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to get it. A parent's sin can do harm to the baby. Y'all want to know how? Yeah. You can have venereal diseases. And when the baby comes through the channel for birth, the baby can pick up mama's disease. And the baby can come here blind or crippled because of foolishness that mama and daddy brought about. You can have smoke, marijuana, cocaine, all kind of stuff, and then get pregnant, and it can damage the brain of the baby. Am I here by myself? That's why if you're gonna give birth to children, at least try and owe that much to the child to try to live a life that won't damage the life of your baby. Because listen, brothers and sisters, whenever you have children, you see yourself living over again. Because when you live, you ain't just living for yourself, you're living for your children. Because they watch everything you do. They watch and hear every word you say. Talk to me, somebody. If you owe that to your children, not to damage their lives, give them a chance to live a good life. How am I doing, y'all? But listen to Jesus. Jesus said, neither has seen. This man or his parents. Watch this. But this was done. That my father's work should be made manifest. Ain't that something? The Lord could have healed this boy before he was born. The Lord could have given him his sight before he got here. But the Lord delayed the healing until this young man became full grown. And then the Lord restored him back to health. I'm talking to somebody here that you've been waiting on deliverance. You want to know how long is it going to take for God to deliver you? Can I tell you this morning, sometimes what God is doing, he got to wait until he can get some glory. Because if he do stuff sometime too soon, you'll give the glory to somebody else. Yeah, if he do it too soon, you'll say, I'm delivered because uh, I had a smart mother. I'm delivered because uh, we found uh, a great physician. I'm delivered because uh, I found a wonderful hospital to be in. But God says, so sometimes I'm going to wait uh, until your medication can't do you no good. I'm going to wait uh, until your medical doctor walks out of the room and shake his head and say, there ain't no healing. I'm going to wait until your family, one by one, start counting you out. And I want you to know that man's extremity is God's opportunity. Just shake one hand, say, name, it's never too late with God.
said when others said no the God said will say yes do I have a witness he said this was done that my father's work should be made manifest matter of fact that's really why the Lord answers our prayer. Listen at him in John 14, 13. He said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name. He said, that will I do. That the Father, here it is, may be glorified. In other words, the reason God answered our prayer is not because we know how to pray. It's not because we're doing everything right to do. It's not because we're living such holy, yeah, life. <clears throat> but God answers our prayer so that his Father can get glory out of our lives. I wonder if there anybody in the house this morning that God is getting glory out of your life because only what you do for Christ will last. Do whatever you want to do, but I want to tell you my God will have the last word. And then listen that Jesus said, uh, he cuts in, uh, and you can tell uh, in John's writing uh, that he just give you minutes of reports. Uh, he ver cuts in in verse 4. He said, uh, I yeah, mm, must uh, work uh, the works of him uh, that sent me while it is day. Mm, that's what we should do always. Uh, when you look back, and see what God has done for us, then we must conclude as to what we're going to do for God. Is there anybody in here this morning that feel like you owe God? Yeah. Is anybody here when you think of what God has already done for you, when you think about how God delivered you from your mess, can you remember that time when you wanted to give up and throw in the towel? Can you remember the time when you was at your lowest? You didn't like nobody around you. You didn't like your spouse. You didn't like your friend. You didn't like your family. You didn't like yourself. You didn't like your situation. But God... Well, bless you. We're out of time. Certainly not out of message. I hope and pray you have been blessed while listening to just a portion of this message. I'd like for you to come and be our special guest and be in a live worship service here at Salem. We're located at 2237 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee. We're between Airways and Cooper on Parkway. Our service is 930 Sunday morning. Love for you to come and share with us and be our special guest. My goodness, it's nothing like being in a live worship service here at New Salem Church. I want to invite you to be my very, very special guest. Looking forward to having you in this place. Come partner with us, share in the ministry. Maybe you're between churches, not paying your tithes anyway. You know it's right to pay your tithes. Don't take it from some other church that you're a member, but if you're not, a part of a ministry now. We'd love for you to pay your tithes here. We'll make sure you get the necessary things so you can file it on your tax as return. We'd love for you to share with us. Salem is a wonderful place doing a great work for the Lord. Love to have you to be with us. Can I say to you again, thank you so much. Remember, God is good. That's right. All the time. Uh, get a call from God uh, it's not my mother uh, it's not my father uh, it's not my sister uh, it's not my brother uh, but it's
bless me, oh Lord, uh, standing in the need of prayer. Uh, I don't need nobody else uh, to do my work for me. Uh, I don't need nobody else uh, to go to God for me. Uh, I, I must do I have a witness. Uh, I must do it for myself. Uh, it's personal with me. He done too much for me. Uh, when I was down at my lowest can I tell you what he did he reached way down picked me up turned me around placed my feet on solid ground I'm not waiting on somebody else to do something for me I'm going to do it while I can I'm going to run while I can I'm going to say while I can I'm going to live while I can Because the songwriter said One of these days You won't be able to do it Either because night is coming Tell somebody night is coming You don't have long To do what you need to do Because night is Help me say night Night, yes, sir. Night, night, night is coming. When night comes, I can't work no more. When night comes, I can't preach no more. When night comes, I can't serve no more. I owe him, yes, sir. Oh him, ah, oh him, ah, oh him, ah, oh him, ah, oh him. To order your copy of today's message on CD, DVD, or cassette, visit our website at GodIsGoodMinistries.net or by calling 1-800-375-4007 or you may write us at 2237 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, 38114. Oh, God is good.